So do more with Ansible and learn about variables. So variables control everything in Ansible. So you're gonna to need to know this. Watch the video, take it in. What I'm about to show you is gonna be using nested variables and then I'm gonna expand that to use a dynamic variable within the nested variables. So you're gonna get it in a couple of minutes. This knowledge is gonna make you into an Ansible power user. Just click like, subscribe, see more content like this. Let's go. So the first thing to do, navigate to my link here. So just, it's got all the information that we're gonna cover and let's just head on straight into it. So crop up a variable on my server, I in AWS. Um, first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to copy all this and have a look. Yeah, it's nested bars. Let's go into nested bars. Lovely. That's all there. So, the first thing we're going to do is set up our variables. So, vi default main. And I'm just going to take them straight from here. So this one here, we're actually going to use and control this Bristol one, the location. Um, <laughs> I love it. Every video, I never get this right. Okay, so these are our variables that we're going to use. Let's just put a, a gap between this one. There we go, so you can see it's been set apart. Let me get back a directory just so that we're in the same area for the example. Okay, so we've created a role, we've added our variables. Now I'm just going to create some little debugs, which is how we're going to manage the variables. Okay, so just a couple of simple variables. Let's take, actually, let's do this. Yeah. So the first one, we, so this is how we affect it. So let's let's have a look at this. So if we cap default, default. So we can see here that we have offices and then London and then Bristol and then users Dave, users Jill. And here we've got offices.london.users.name and offices.bristol.users.name. And you can see that to get to the nested variable that we need, we're using the dot. There are there is another slightly different way you can do it with square brackets as well, and I've got an example of that coming up. So now that we've got that in there, if we um, create our deployment file, so what, what's happened here is we've created just a file that's going to run some tasks, um, but I need to create a deploy.yaml file which is then going to run um, the playbook for us. So let's um, Again. Okay, so this is the deployment file, and we're going to include our nested nested vars role. Okay, that's it. So we're just going to run on localhost with a local connection. It's giving it a name of nested variables. We're not going to bother gathering facts because we don't need them. We're supplying all the facts that we need, and we're going to include a role, and that role is nested vars that we've already created. So that's a simple. So let's crack on so we're going to run the role next so let's save this file now we just copy this we're just going to run the deploy and that in turn is going to run our role okay sorry about this this is just a warning you can set things to ignore that in your ansible.cfg but I haven't got one so the first thing we asked it to do was show us our London workers and it said Dave and then we asked for Bristol workers it said Jill and then the dynamic variable was Jill again. So now we can actually override that variable. So if we have a quick look again at nested bars, default bars, we can see that we have this location. And when we come back up here to how we were using that, we've got offices location.users.name. So we can actually now can control this location variable. Um, we do it here by saying that location equals Bristol. But if we changed it from Bristol to London, we'd then get, we wouldn't get Jill, we get Dave. So if we come back here, this section here about setting the variable using extra vars, so all we need to do is do minus E, tell it the variable, and then the new variable. So the variable name, and then the new variable. 
So we run it again, but this time we're going to select London. Then we can do it. Then it shows you that we've actually controlled the variable. So if you were to set this in a playbook or for whatever mechanism you need, um, then depending on what your playbook's doing, you can run different variables. You know, whether that's relying on a fact or whether that's doing anything else. So you can see here that it's changed to Dave. All because we changed location equals London instead of location equals Bristol. If we take this off, the default is Bristol and it will flip back to Jill. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, we use this, this becomes our dynamic variable and we call it um, using this method here. So it's um, yeah, it's quite cool, easy to use and understand. If you want to see more content like this, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.